In the few following episodes, we will learn about parameters. Specifically, in this episode, we will learn how to give movements to object, how to create new parameters, and how to organize parameters in group. Parameter is the core operation mechanic of a live 2D model. Literally, your model does absolutely nothing without you building parameters. Rigging modeler mode is building the parameter. Animating in animator mode is operating those parameters that you built. Even physics system uses your parameters. Face rig, iPhone, motion tracking, they use your parameters. But parameter is a long word that I get tired from typing or saying, so sometimes I will refer to them just as params. It is easy to understand what params does once you see how it works. But most learners fail to understand the deeper concepts of it and just use that one basic usage over and over again. When a lot of times, what they need in order to improve their works is using parameters at its fullest. On extreme other end of the spectrum, some users come up with crazy techniques to use parameters to do that one thing they want their model to do. But there are different ways to accomplish that one thing. However, they use their parameters the way that it would cause a major constraint to other performance of their model. Clients do not like to hear limitations on their model. A professional Live 2D designer cares about usability. Keep this in mind as you go through this tutorial. So let's go to Cubism and take a look at the sample model. This is a finished model with parameters fully built. There are angle X, Y, and Z for the head movements. There's the eye open for blinking, and there's the mouth open for talking. Now let's go to our own material. We now try to rake our gray object, meaning that we'll make it move. We want to give it a horizontal movement. Select the object. We know that we selected the object when we see the red frame. We can also check the parts tree and the deformer hierarchy tree. If the double arrow icon is turned on, then these trees will automatically highlight the object that we selected. Once we confirmed our selected object, Double click the parameter that we want the movement to be registered with, and it would open this keyform edit dialog. Click on any value on the scale to place a keyform. Click again to remove it. We need one on negative 30, on 0, and on 30. Confirm the values below, and then hit OK when you're ready. Notice what has changed. The angle x parameter has three big green dots. They are the keyforms. Keyforms are points where you can set the state of a selected object. Each point stores the data of the transformation. There is also a red dot, which I usually call the knob. The knob represents the current value of the parameter we are reading and operating on. Now, if we deselect the object by clicking outside of the object, the green dots turn white. If we select the object again, they turn green. Always be sensitive to the green dots and the red knob when you're working. Also, notice how other parameters don't have any big dot or any color. While those parameters are free parameters, they have no object registered any action to them yet, so they do not do anything to your model. Make sure, again, we selected our object. The current value is indicated by the red knob, and we are currently at zero. We want this object to stay at its initial position when the parameter is at zero, so we don't want to move anything here. Slide the red knob to negative 30. You can do that either by left click and dragging the knob or you can right-click the keyform far left. We want this keyform to be the state where the object is inside the pink box. So now, we simply move the object into the pink box. Test the result by sliding on the param. 
Observe that the object transforms from 0 to negative 30. Live 2D automatically interpolates the in-between frames for us. There are two rules that I want you to memorize. And you may not know why now that these are important, but these are minor details that you have to keep in mind. Number one, when we click drag the whole object with the red box just now, we are basically selecting all the vertices in the art mesh and move them all together. It is the same as moving all the vertices individually. Number two, when an art mesh transforms from keyform to keyform, which is essentially each and every vertice traveling, they travel in a straight line. Now there are workarounds to this law. With rotation deformer and extended interpolate, sometimes they don't travel in a straight line. However, just memorize this for now. Vertices from point A to point B always travel in a straight line. 9 out of 10 learners spending extra hours unable to improve their model is because they don't understand this concept. So, this is how we give movements to an object. But what if we don't want to use any of these parameters? We want to use our own original one. This is useful because most models that I make I need to create at least 40 to 60 new parameters that are original, sometimes even more. So this is how we do it. First, we remove all the movements in angle X. Select the object, select angle X at 0, use the right click on the middle keyform. Double click angle X parameter, remove all three points, then OK. We have reset our object to its original state. Now go to the bottom of the param palette. You'll see this button that says New Parameter. Click on it to open the Create dialog. All parameters have three main properties, the name, ID, and range. Name and ID sounds like the same thing, but they're quite different, and you have to know how they're different. Name is usually the display name of the parameter. The one that is displayed here is the name, in animator mode or physics editor mode, you'd be seeing the names too. In fact, in QSM, you would rarely use the ID at all. ID is more often for the programmer side, the developer side, to read and use. But pick your ID carefully. Just because you don't use them doesn't mean you can give them whatever random name that makes the life hard for other people. Now, the ID has some naming rules. If you see a text down below, there it says click here for ID naming rules. Go ahead, click it and see what it has to say. Now you may have to come back to this later. Press OK to close it. Traditionally, in CubeSum 2, the naming convention goes like this. We use all caps with underline. Post 3.0, we use no space and uppercase only for the first character or of every word, like this. Sometimes we need to use the old style if our model will be used in some legacy 2.0 environment. Let's go with this style for now, and we will name it slide x, and then the ID would be param slide x. And the range, just keep it as it is. Among the initial params, some params have minimum and maximum of negative 30 and 30. Some are negative 10 and 10. Some are negative 1 and 1, and some are 0 and 1. In theory, the range of number, being large or small, doesn't really affect the rig's performance. But in actual practice, it may affect your physics. It may affect other applications using your model. So here's the general rule. If it's a big movement, use negative and positive 30. If it's a small one, then plus or minus 10. If it's for physics, mm, negative 1, 0, and positive 1. And if it's turning off a part, then use 1 and 0. How about default values? You may notice that most of the default values are 0. 
but in some usage, you might want it to be different in other values. Now, there are a lot of pros and cons to talk about that part, and we will explore them in later episodes. So now let's just stick to zero. Now, you don't have to feel too stressed out from deciding those values at this moment, because anywhere in your project later on, you can change the parameters minimum, maximum, and default values anytime. But you gotta be aware that if you do decide to change them, it may affect the objects that you already have given some actions to them. For example, if you have a arm rotation parameter that has originally a minimum maximum value of negative 30 to 30, and now you want to change it to negative 10 and 10. But after doing that, your arms that already have rotation, they still have the negative 30 and 30 keyforms. They will still continue to exist and do the same thing, but your parameter would be too short to reach to both uh, either ends. Now, there are ways to um, accommodate those problems uh, to fix that back to normal, uh, but we'll talk more about them later. Just for now, I want you to remember, be aware that changing your um, parameter min-max value doesn't mean that the key forms will scale accordingly. When ready, press OK. Now we have our new param. If it's somewhere at the bottom, click and drag it and put it back on the top of the list where you want it to be. We can also create param group folders to keep things organized. Click on a yellow folder to create a new one. Give it a sensible name, and then move the param into the folder. And we can also change the color of the folder to keep it easy to recognize. So with the new param, we can give the gray object the sliding movement again. This time, let's make it more interesting. With more keyforms, we can make this transformation more dynamic. We know how to give one object one param to operate. But note that the object does not own the param. One param can operate more than one object in any transformation you want it to do for each object. It could be two things completely irrelevant. For example, see how this pink container is using slide X. As a summary, we learn how to make objects move. We learn the basic operations of parameters. We can also make new ones too. I also talked briefly about good and bad practices. Although we are still early in this tutorial, we want to start growing the awareness of how to be professional. That means you need to be aware that when you make a model, this product is used by other applications outside of Cubism by other people. Some programmers will be making games for your model. Some VTubers will be acting in your model in FaceRig or iPhone. Think ahead. Every step you take, how your decisions will affect how other people use your product. Then, you start to pay attention to minor details. Suddenly, the parameter ID and range values matters to you. We'll talk more about these details throughout the tutorial. If you want to join Iron Vertex Guild someday, you need to show me that you follow these standards. To end this episode, we'll take away with this remark. A parameter is for someone else to pilot your model.